Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 5th E Agricom webinar dated on the 26th of April, 2022. Our first speaker is the Assistant Vice President for Marketing of Unico. He is an experienced and certified professional marketer with exemplary skills in business development, brand management, distribution selling, and strategic planning in the field of agribusiness. He is a Ferdinand E. Marcos Scholar, finishing with Bachelors of Science in Fisheries, major in aquaculture from the University of the Philippines with honors, cum laude. He took his master in business administration from the Ateneo Graduate School of Business. He also completed Unilab Harvard Leadership Program. He has been awarded the 2008 Agora Award for Outstanding Achievement in Marketing Management by the Philippine Marketing Association. He is a certified professional marketer in the Asia Pacific one of the founding members of the Marketing Institute of the Philippines and also sat on the board of the Philippine Marketing Association, PMA, as well as Philippine Association of National Advertisers, PANA. He currently serves as the president of the Philippines Association of Feed Millers Incorporated, PAFMI. Here to talk about opportunities and challenges in the Philippine feed mill industry, let's welcome Mr. Edwin C. Mapano. Thank you very much, Gabriel, for that kind introduction. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. I was informed that our attendees came from various sectors like academe, poultry, swine, and fishery industries, local government, and of course, my colleagues from the feed mill industry. It is my privilege to share with you a snapshot of the Philippine feed mill industry, the prospects and trends, including current situation an environment, assessment of strengths and weaknesses, opportunities, and challenges. So the outline of my presentation is as follows. We will have an overview of the feed mill industry in the Philippines. Second, we will tackle about the opportunities and challenges of the industry. Finally, we will summarize it with some key takeaways. Let me start my presentation with the overview of the Philippine agriculture, where feed milling plays a vital role in the value chain of the different subsectors. In 2019, livestock is valued at 303 billion pesos, poultry is valued at 242 billion pesos, and fisheries at 281 billion pesos. All the values of production in agriculture are expressed at current prices. The sector had the negative growth in 2020, brought about by the African swine fever outbreak. The poultry sector posted positive growth as swine raisers shifted to layer production. Livestock, poultry, and fisheries account for 46% of the total value of agricultural product production. At current prices, the value of agricultural production is 1.9 trillion pesos. In terms of value of production by crops and species, corn posted 118 billion pesos, hogs around 270 billion pesos, chicken 193 billion pesos, and fisheries around 302 billion pesos. For the overview of the feed mill industry, let us examine the inventory of livestock and poultry. In terms of animal production, swine registered 12.7 million heads in January 2019 and dropped to 9.49 million heads in January 2022. This represents a decline of around 25% in population. ASF has already spread to several regions and provinces in the Philippines. Broiler production dropped by 16.84, which was a result of the culling. For layers, population grew by 15.17%, since many swine raisers shifted to layer production. Aquaculture is another sector where the feed milling industry provides inputs it registered a flat growth from 2018 to 2020, 
It delivered a total volume of 2.4 million metric ton, valued at 118 billion pesos in 2020. In this table, we have the inventory of the different species as of January 20, 2021 and their corresponding feed consumption. For swine, with an inventory of 9.9 .9 million heads, its estimated feed consumption is 4.75 4 million metric tons. For broilers, a 53.9 million population consumes 3.9 million metric tons of feeds. For layers, a 42.9 million population, its estimated feed consumption is 3.1 million metric tons. And the total estimated feed demand in livestock and poultry is about 16.4 million metric tons. This chart on the estimated feed production by species, swine accounts for 27% of the feed production, followed by broiler with a 22% share and layer registering 17%. Aquaculture, which is comprised of the milk, tilapia, shrimp, prawn production accounts for 8%. In 2021, the total volume of corn production reached 8.24 8 million metric tons, of which 73%, or 6.05 6 million metric tons, is yellow corn, mainly used for animal feeds, and the rest around 2.3 million metric tons or 27% is white corn, which serves as staple in central Visayas and some parts in Mindanao and snacks, according to the DA National Corn Program. Yellow corn production is valued at 118 billion pesos. Let's examine the impact of corn price hike in a 500 sow level farm. The farm uh, consumes a total of 2,880 tons of feeds per annum. A 20% price increase in corn will result to an additional cost of around 5.84 million pesos. And uh, based on the study of Dr. Dr. Masilungan on the impact of feed ingredients price volatility for non-commercial hog feeds, the average feed cost in 2019 is around 23.27 pesos per kilo versus 31.14 pesos per kilo as of January 2022. Thus, a 500 sow level farm, the additional cost of 7 pesos and 87 cents per kilo will translate to roughly 23 million incremental expense. To continue, one of the growth drivers in the feed mill industry is the growing Philippine population. Filipinos will reach 112 million mark in 2022 with annual production growth, growth rate of 1.32%. Another opportunity in the feed mill industry is the growing per capita consumption of the Filipinos. The per capita consumption as of 2020 for Filipinos is as, of, is as of follows. For pork, it is 14.9 kilos. For chicken meat, it is 13.74 kilos. For chicken egg, it is 4.92 kilos. And for fish, it is 38.2 kilos. Comparing it with our neighboring ASEAN countries like Thailand and Vietnam, we see Vietnam consuming 24.7 kilos for pork and 16.87 kilos for chicken meat, while Thailand posted a 12.10 kilos per capita consumption on chicken eggs. As our GDP per capita improves, the per capita consumption also increases.
moving forward on the challenges affecting the feed mill industry, let us examine the availability of the macro, major macro ingredients for feed milling. The demand for yellow corn as animal feed continues to increase through the years. Okay. To augment the shortage of the local yellow corn supply, the feed mill industry imports yellow corn and feed wheat from ASEAN and other countries. Yellow corn importation in 2018 is around 600, 604. 1,000 metric tons to 248,000 metric tons in 2021. These are sourced out from United States, Argentina, Brazil, Thailand, Indonesia, and Myanmar. A major imported raw material used as a substitute for corn in animal feeds is feed wheat. It is a high yielding, palatable cereal grain with high levels of energy and starch. It is low in digestible fiber, but its protein level, although modest, is higher than other cereals. Feed wheat importation registered around 2.8 million metric tons in 2018, 3.7 million metric tons in 2019, 2.7 million metric tons in 2020, and 2.5 million metric tons in 2021. Soybean meal. Okay. Soybean meal is the most important protein source used to feed farm animals. Soybean meal importation is steadily growing by 10.5% per annum. In 2021, a total of 2.6 million metric tons of soybean meal has been imported. Now let's review the price volatility of some of the major raw materials like corn. Price of corn remains on the high side in 2021 and 2022, averaging around 18.58 per kilo and 21.22 per kilo respectively. Next, on the U.S. soybean meal, uh, the Philippines is the largest market of U.S. soybean meal. In December 2021, Soybean meal registered its highest price of around 40 to even as high as 50 per kilo versus its average price of 23.20 in 2020. The high price was brought about by the very tight supply. There was a delay in the shipment because of the damage and loader at a key location in the Pacific Northwest that supplies soybean meal to the Philippines. For feed wheat, prices are elevated because of the Ukraine-Russia conflict. Ukraine supplies 10% of the global wheat exports. In 2021, feed wheat prices moved from 16.63 to 21.74 per kilo. Next, rice bran. The Philippines milled rice production is around 12.4 million metric tons, and, and it imports 2.8 million metric tons. There is a shortage of rice bran supply in the market, driving its prices to as high as 19 per kilo. Pollard feed is high in dietary fiber. It is a good source of protein, calcium, phosphorus, and lysine. It is good in the diets of pigs, poultry, ruminants, and horses of all ages. Pollard registered its highest price of 15.71 per kilo in September 2021. This year, it falls within the price range of 14.20 to 16 pesos per kilo. For cocoa oil, Typhoon Rai, local name of that reached the Philippines in December 2021 and damaged coconut trees, resulting in the decline for copra and coconut oil production and exports. Meanwhile, the continuing conflict in Ukraine is expected to push palm oil prices up and constraints, and rather constrain imports. Like many other commodities, 
palm oil experienced high prices throughout 2021. Pricing had more than doubled over the past 18 months to a record high as high of 1,213.85 US dollar per ton in October 2021. In November and December, however, prices dipped and weighed on the 21's, uh, 2021's average pricing to 1,000 US dollar per ton. The prices can be attributed to lower palm, uh, palm oil output. For the most of 2020 and throughout 2021, Malaysia's COVID-19 pandemic led border closures that have starved the country's oil palm estates of many foreign workers. To continue, challenges affecting the feed mill industry, there are diseases causing high mortalities and reduction in inventory. Uh, the Philippines uh, Department of Agriculture through the Bureau of Animal Industry highlighted that since mid-2019, the ASF virus has affected pig farms in 3,707 barangays in 685 cities and municipalities, mostly in Luzon. ASF has forced the country to ramp up pork imports to address an acute domestic shortage. Avian influenza also poses a threat to the poultry industry. It has been detected in duck farms, broiler, feeder farms, chicken layer farms, and the like. And also, the Philippine economy plunged by 9.5% in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic and remained in one of the longest quarantines in the world. This resulted to the closures of HRIs and the decline in the food consumption. The stringent lockdown protocol severely disrupted distribution, supply chain, and production. Other factors affecting the feed mill industry are the high tariff rates for coin. Currently, yellow coin imports sourced from non ASEAN countries and under the minimum access volume quota are charged a 35% tariff, while those outside the MEV quota are charged with 50%. Because of special trade concession, coin imports from within ASEAN are charged 5%. Okay. Then uh, there's also the local government uh, that imposed taxes. Then also a very high logistics cost on the archipelago, like Philippines. Logistics costs ate up around 27% of sales among manufacturing firms in the Philippines. And uh, last year, based on the study, it was the highest in, uh, among the selected Southeast Asian countries. Agricultural products are high volume, low value, and highly perishable. These products are generally wasted during the process of food distribution in the supply chain. Major contributors to huge losses are the inherent na nature of this produce, the tropical setting of the country, lack of post-harvest infrastructure and facilities, the way of handling and the multi-layered distribution system. Now for the key takeaways, uh, Philippine feed mill industry plays a crucial role in agriculture, livestock, poultry and fishery development. The total estimated market volume of the feed industry is more or less 17.95 uh, million metric tons of animal feeds valued at 538.6 billion pesos. It ensures food security by supplying the animal protein meat requirement, the annual protein meat requirement of Filipinos, such as 1.67 million metric tons of pork, 1.54 million metric tons of chicken meat, 551,000 metric tons of egg, and 4.2 million metric tons of fish. Corn production, particularly yellow corn, is not sufficient to meet the demand of the animal feed industry. Thus, 
substantial volume of feed wheat and corn are also imported to augment the balance requirements. Yellow corn accounts to 50 to 70 percent of the total input costs of feed millers. And also, sustainable management of natural resources is very important. Increasing costs of feed inputs, the agricultural commodities resulted to higher production costs and high food and meat prices. Availability, accessibility, and affordability of raw materials are critical to, to a competitive, efficient, and sustainable feed milling, livestock, and poultry farming, and aquaculture. Growing Philippine population, increasing demand for protein meat consumption, and higher farm gate prices are the opportunities in the feed mill industry. The occurrence of diseases like ASF, avian influenza, pandemic, and rising raw material prices are among the challenges looming over the Philippine feed industry. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that you get to learn the opportunities and challenges of our Philippine feed mill industry.